Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Assalamu alaikum. Penny, Penny, do you want to say it together? Yeah. Okay, three, two, one. Eid Mubarak. Oh, Eid Mubarak to you guys. Oh, and Eid Mubarak to you, Penny. Yeah, Eid Mubarak to you, Muhammad Ali. High five. High five. Oh, ah, yeah. it's our last day of fasting today. Well, at least for me. Yeah. And I can't wait for Eid. I'm so excited. Me too. Me too. You know. You know. Um. You know what I'm going to have for iftar this evening? What are you going to have? Penny? I'm going to have some fruits really? and some vegetables. Do you know why? Why? Because yeah. I remember when we talked about having healthy habits. Uh -huh. Well, you know what? Yeah. I'm going to try and keep those habits going even though Ramadan is finished. Oh, mashallah. I'm really proud of you. Well done, Penny. Mm. That's a really admirable thing to do. I think so too. Yeah. You know what? There's something I talked about as well yeah. with Pip and we talked about forgiveness. Oh, yes. And yes. I watched that episode with Pip. You? Oh. I think Pip felt really bad yeah. for being naughty. You could you could tell that that he 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 was sorry for his actions. Yeah. You know, oh. he actually taught me something very important because What's that? because he reminded me what it was like to be to feel sorry for something that you've done and then return back to Allah. And you oh. know what? I think I'm going to be even more forgiving yeah. and more charitable yeah. even after Ramadan is finished. Subhanallah. You know, asking Allah for forgiveness is a wonderful way of getting closer to him. Uh-huh. And there are some nice du'as you can recite too. Oh, really? Yeah, like um, I don't know the du'a, but I uh -huh. know that one. It goes Astaghfirullah. Um, Astaghfirullah. Astaghfirullah. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, have you been and saying it during the Laylatul Qadr? No? I have. Oh, yeah, I remember that episode about Laylatul Qadr. Yeah. I think it was with Rafiq and Layla. Oh, yeah. wow. Mashallah. Or, or maybe, maybe Pip was on that <laughs> night. Oh, I can't remember. You know, you know Penny, hmm. we've had so many beautiful episodes yeah. throughout this whole month, mashallah. Yeah. And I've learned so much, not only about how we can better ourselves, yeah. but even about the Ahlul Bayt. Like, I think we spoke oh, yeah. about Lady Khadija. Yeah, we Lady spoke about Imam Hassan, We salam. did. It was his birthday. Yeah. And then we spoke about Imam Ali, alayhi salam. Oh, my hero. I love talking about the Ahlul Bayt. Uh -huh. And you know, the thing with Ramadan is, yeah. I've noticed uh -huh. that I remember them and think about them a lot more than usual. Oh, subhanAllah. Hmm. Is it the same with your Quran recitation by oh, any chance? Oh, yeah. You know, my mom tells me that this month is kind of magical. Yeah. Because you know how the Quran was revealed to the Prophet? Yes, yes. To Angel Jibra'il? Yes, that's on, right. Uh, uh, during Ramadan. Yeah. And... And there's a special connection between the Quran and this holy month yeah. where it's just even nicer to recite it. Absolutely. I, I agree. Yeah. You know? And the thing with the Quran, uh -huh. you can't have the Quran without the Ahlul Bayt. Ah, true. And you can't have the Ahlul Bayt without the Quran. Ah. And, you know, we can learn so much from them, Muhammad yeah. Ali. But, you but, know, I'm, I'm kind of sad at the same time. I'm a bit annoyed oh. that that Ramadan's over and I have to wait all the way until next year. I know what you mean. Yeah, cause and, and do you feel like, because I feel like I didn't do enough mm. in Ramadan. Like I yeah. wish I had read more Quran. Yeah. I wish I had prayed more. But wow. You know, MashaAllah, Penny. That's, that's very beautiful. Well, you know, you yeah. have today until this evening to go. And tomorrow is a big, big celebration. Inshallah. Yeah. Inshallah. You know, mm -hmm. Muhammad Ali, I've yeah. always wanted to know. Yeah. I mean, what is Eid really all about? Mm. And why do Muslims all over the world celebrate it? Well, Eid, this Eid is called Eid al-Fitr. Yeah. But you have to wait to talk about Eid al-Fitr after our break because we're about to join Captain News. Oh! see what those pesky characters are yeah. up to. Yeah, it's so okay, important cool. to keep up to date with the news, guys. Yeah. Isn't it, Penny? Especially when they're talking about things like fridges, freezers, leaves, and, yeah. and even cabbages. <laughs> <laughs> All right, over to you, Captain News. Yay! Welcome to Captain News. And have I got news for you. Mm. 
Now, you would agree that sharks are very scary underwater creatures, but in a twist of events, it turned out that a little guppy fish had come to this great shark's rescue. Sam, the shark, was being drawn into a whirlpool and he was so scared that all he could do was scream for help. When questioned by local reporters and the police, Sam had this to say. Well, it's true that sharks are meant to be big and scary, but we can't be brave all the time. And anyway, how would you feel if you were being sucked into a whirlpool? That may be the case, but let's see what Gary the guppy fish had to say. Um, you, you wouldn't think that little thing like me would be able to help someone as big as Sam. This great white shark, but never underestimate the power of a big brain in a little body. I threw Sam a really long piece of seaweed, which he, he bit onto, and then with the help of Wilfred the whale, we reeled him back into safety. We were sweating a lot, but luckily the water was nice and cool. Just goes to show, even if something does look big and scary, it doesn't mean it always is. In other news this week, there has been a report of a fridge and a freezer who have gone on strike because too much food was being left in them. Frank the Fridge was interviewed by local authorities and this is what he had to say. It's not nice when the family I live with open my door and hold their noses going Perry, what an awful smell. <laughs> Mom, the fridge smells yucky. It really hurts my feelings and makes me not want to do my job. So together with Fred the Freezer, we decided to switch ourselves off. But you can imagine, no doubt, that this only made the situation much worse. When asked by local authorities about this, Fred and Frank ended up looking like this. Oh dear, so the next time that any fridges or freezers want to switch themselves off, they might want to remember the case of Fred and Frank and stay switched on. Hmm. In our missing animals report this week, we've had an incident of Mandy the town mouse who was last seen in the English countryside. Here is a report on the events that led up to her disappearance. A town mouse called Mandy and a country mouse called Melissa were the very best of friends. The country mouse, Melissa, one day invited her friend to come and see her at her home in the fields. The town mouse, Mandy, came and they sat down to a dinner of sweet corn and peas. Mandy, who was quite a proud mouse and liked to show off about living in a town, said, Oh my gosh, what a dirty place you live in. You live like a cockroach. You should see the way I live. It's amazing. I live like a queen. Melissa was very upset and insulted at these comments. Later on that evening, when they sat down to watch television, there was a report of a local fire at one of the town houses where Mandy happened to live. Poor Mandy had to watch her house burn in front of her right there on the TV screen and she could do nothing about it. Mandy had no choice but to remain in the countryside with her friend Melissa, who was kind enough to let her stay. But lo and behold, as Mandy wasn't used to all the different insects and animals of the countryside, she was snatched by a cockroach and taken away. No one has seen her since. If any animal or insects or rodents have seen Mandy, 
they should phone this number straight away. Please call 0203 515 1234. Thanks for joining us on Captain News. Over to you, Muhammad Ali, in the studio. <laughs> <laughs> They're so funny. Oh, Captain Those News. pesky characters. Yeah. I want Captain News to keep reporting. Do you know, I was thinking, how yeah. amazing would it be if I got a chance to follow Captain News around and maybe like, you know, go on all these adventures and I'll be like reporting live <laughs> with Captain News. That'd be so funny. Oh, yeah. that would be yeah subhanallah subhanallah Aww. did you have a question for me penny yes i did uh -huh. it was it was really all about eid i uh -huh. mean you know i'm i mean i know yeah i'm still yeah. little yeah and i've only really started kind of understanding it a bit better this yeah, year sure but i'm sure uh -huh. muhammad ali there is much, much more to learn. Yeah, that's very, very true. Can you well, fill me in? Let me tell you a bit more about Eid then. Okay, because, I'm all ears. Because, you know, even I asked the Sheikh because I'm always learning too. Oh. Just because you're a little old doesn't mean that you have to know everything. Oh, thank you. Everyone's always learning. Even so, you? Yeah, of course, even me. But you're big. <laughs> yes, but I'll always be learning until I die. Oh. So, so I asked the Sheikh yeah. and he said that Eid is basically a celebration to return. So, oh. so think about it like this way. When you... Return where? Well, it's oh. return to your old habits. Not, not old habits, but yeah. return to the idea of you're able to eat food again. Oh, For example, during the 30 days, yeah. we don't eat or drink, right? Yes, that's right. For a whole right. 30 days. Yeah, it's hard. And, and now you're returning to the state you were in before, physically, where you're oh. not able to eat and drink. Yeah. But of course, spiritually, you have grown so much wow. that you've just, you're just kind of like a new person. Yeah, you feel and brand new. Yeah, it's, it's like the Sheikh described it to me like, when I went to school, yeah. I used to have loads of loads of tests and exams. Oh. Have you had any tests so far, Penny? Uh, uh, I did have, I did have one. Yeah. And it was, I remember being a bit nervous about it Aww. because I wanted to do well. Yeah, that's yeah. good. You know, yeah, yeah. you know, like even for example, you're not the only one that gets nervous with tests. Oh. Even the Prophet used to sometimes shake when he was standing in Salah. Oh. Not because he was nervous, but more because he loved Allah so oh, much. Wow. He knew he was going to speak to Allah. Yeah. So it was out of that love for Allah. That amazing. Yeah, he was like, kind of like shaking sort of wow. thing. How amazing is that? It so is. when you when you do a test because you really really want to do well, yeah. then of course it's okay to be nervous. Oh, I so, see. So my point, I for, completely forgot my point. <laughs> my point was mm. that the sheikh told me that you know when you do tests, right? It's so yeah. like for the whole year you study and you prepare yourself and yeah. you, know, you go through all this revision and yeah, learning and for reading. Example, and yeah. Like when you have a spelling test. Oh yeah, you go day, over it. Yeah, like, you go over and over. Like, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. You repeat it and then you close your eyes. Yeah. Or you, you cover the page. <laughs> yeah. And then you try and remember. How do you spell um, upside down? <laughs> or how do you spell, you know, curious? Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah. So, so after you've done the test. Yeah. And you pass the test. Yeah. Do you celebrate? Yeah, you do. Yeah, you exactly. do. You kind of might like. Uh, well, I asked my mom yeah. to buy me these um, these things. They're called like fruit. Um, they're they're like fruit sweets. Oh yeah. Yeah, and oh. they're very good for you, but they taste delicious. Uh huh. Yeah. So, so in that same way, we're celebrating the end of our fasting. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And guess who's hosting that celebration? Um, so who so who have been worshipping this whole time? Oh, Allah! Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I get it. That's nice. Like we're guests. Yeah, exactly. Because oh. we've been the guests of Allah this whole holy month. MashaAllah. Right? And, and how, how long is Eid? Well, Eid is... Uh, 
like just one day, I think. There's, there's no really time period for Eid. Oh, but I see. there is a time period for Ramadan. Yeah, yeah, there and, is. And it's, it's normally a maximum of 30 days. But oh, if, it's, if it's not 30 days, for example, the 29th day, yeah. some people might go outside and, and look for the moon. Oh, the moon. Yeah. So if it would be, if it's going to, if, so hang on a minute. So we would know it would be Eid, yeah. which would be the first day of the new Islamic month, Dhul Hijjah. Mm, no. Not really. What's the r- month after Ramadan? Shawwal. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, and, yeah. The, the, and we would know because the, the moon would be like a sliver, like a yeah. little little crescent, the shape a of crescent. a banana. Yeah, the shape of a banana. Yeah. yeah, you can see it. But you know, it's so sad that where we live, it's really difficult to see the moon. Oh. So we have to, sometimes I have to wait like two, two, two or three days after to actually see the moon with my oh, own eyes. Oh, wow. I so, see. so like for example, this year, yeah, we probably won't be able to see the moon, but we know because we've reached the end of thirty days, yeah. we can celebrate Eid. Oh, alhamdulillah. Yeah. Alhamdulillah. And um, yeah. So, Muhammad Ali. Yeah. Question. Yeah. Go for it. Why is it called uh-huh. Eid al No, Eid al Fitr. Eid al Fitr. Fritter? <laughs> no, 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 that's... Idol Fitter. Idol Fitter. Yes. Yeah, what does Fitter mean? Well, have you heard of the term Iftar? Iftar, yeah, yeah, it's when you munch. Exactly. Yeah. And Iftar comes from the word Fitter. Oh! And, and it means to break fast. Oh, subhanAllah. Yeah. So, so Idol Fitter means... To, to break fast. To break fast. And well, Eid al-Fitr is like, so you've been fasting this yeah. whole 30 days, right? Yeah. And then and after 30 days, you're kind of breaking that fast. Yeah. So we're celebrating that breaking fast. Oh. But, but there's something else. Yeah. We have something called Zakat al-Fitr. Have you ever heard of Zakat? Well, I know that on the morning of Eid, uh-huh. my, my dad get some money because yeah. he's i heard him talking to my yeah. mom yeah. about something about how he has to pay some money uh-huh. before the eid prayer exactly but i didn't want to ask because you know mm-hmm. they are grown-ups and they do know best yeah but is that what you're talking about exactly that is exactly oh. what i'm talking about because you know in this holy month yeah we're always told to give more and more to charity right yeah so on the eid day we yeah. take out a bit of depending on how much we've eaten because whatever you love for yourself you should also love for your brother oh so, so whatever Allah. you've eaten yeah. a por- portion of that equivalent to whatever you've eaten yeah. you want to give to someone else you mean other people who might be poor exactly or who, even the orphans yeah oh. someone someone that needs it right oh of course I, yeah well you know and and, and mm. this is sorry what were you gonna say i was just thinking about you know People who don't have much, uh-huh. like, you know, there, there are even poor people, in, there are even poor monsters in my school. Oh. And that's why they wear the same coat and have the same rucksack oh. year after year. So, yeah. you know, as much as we're enjoying uh-huh. ourselves, yeah. I guess, I guess we should spare a thought for those who... Who might not wear nice new clothes. Exactly. You know, Penny, you know, Mm. someone once told me that if you make a sincere uh, intention, like when you really, really, from your heart, actually want to help out, then Allah will give you the opportunity to actually help someone. And like you said, there are people everywhere that we could help. Yes, there are. There are. And I sometimes I see them on the TV. I see them in the streets. Uh And I think to myself, subhanAllah, I have so much to be grateful for. Oh, alhamdulillah. But you know, tomorrow will be a day to celebrate all that we have done because we've gone through so much self-discipline. And you know, because we've been fasting, but it doesn't mean we stop praying. So we pray even more. But we don't have to fast anymore. Exactly. And you know, mm-hmm. I love it when it's Eid because, yeah. you know, yeah. the whole Muslim c- uh, f- community, they yeah. come together like one big ginormous family. Yeah, Isn't exactly. Isn't it? Because we're all brothers and sisters. Uh-huh. Even uh-huh. me. You know, I wish, I wish Eid was every single day. Oh, that would be so much fun. Yeah. But Muhammad Ali. Uh-huh. 
you know some of my friends yeah they've asked me uh -huh. do i celebrate christmas hmm. and, and what did you say to them penny well i said well it is a christmas holiday from school yeah um but i don't have a christmas tree but are I mean, do we celebrate Christmas? Well, Penny, I think that's a very, very good question. Yeah. And I think that little chef and big oh, chef yes. can answer it for us. Alhamdulillah. Can I introduce them? Go for it. Go ahead. Up next are the fabulous, super duper, super chefs. Over to you. Assalamu alaikum dear children and welcome to Super Sheikhs. I'm Big Sheikh Hassan and this is Little Sheikh Hussein. Dear Super Sheikhs, all my friends celebrate Christmas but my family doesn't. Why not? Right, so before I answer it, I would like you to, give, to answer it first. We are Muslims, we don't celebrate Christmas and we have Eid instead yeah, of Christmas. Exactly. So. Every religion has some type of celebration, right? Yep. We don't celebrate Christmas, but we have three celebrations, mainly, right? They are called Eid. The first one is Eidul Fitr, which is after Ramadan. The other one is Eidul Adha, which is after the month of the Hijjah, after people go to uh, Mecca and do their pilgrimage, right? They are yep. called Hajji, for example. Right? Mm -hmm. So, our father, for example, when other people see him, they don't just call him Abu Hassan, which is father of Hassan. No, they call him Haji Abu Hassan. Right? Yep. <laughs> right. So, after they come back from Hajj, there is an Eid for that called Eid al Adha. And the third one is Eid al Ghadir. Eid al Ghadir. That's the Eid where we celebrate the wilayat of Imam Ali. When On... Imam Ali became the successor of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa That's correct. On that day, in a place near Mecca, so just on the outskirts of Mecca, there's a place called Ghadir Khum. It was a spring called Ghadir. And that's where Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa stopped everyone from going, said, don't go, don't go, wait, I have something to talk about. He gathered uh, the, sa um, the saddles of the uh, camels and the horses and made a small What do you call it? Mimbar Right? Yeah So a mimbar is where all the sheikhs and sayyids sit on to give the speech, right? But Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam stood on it He called Imam Ali alayhi wa and he said Man kuntu mawla fahada Ali mawla Whoever I am his mawla His uh, mawla means friend It also means Master. the master of not master as in, uh, I control you. No, but like, I am the person who's in charge of you. Right? Whoever I am his mawla, then Ali is his mawla. He repeated it three times. And he asked everyone to shake Imam Ali's hand and say that you are my success, um, Prophet Muhammad's successor. Right? Yep. So we have three Eids. Eid al-Fitr, Eid al-Adha, and Eid al-Ghadir. But it's not wrong to congratulate the Christians because we can still congratulate them on the birth of Jesus. Jesus was one of the 124,000 prophets that we believe in. Yeah, his name is Nabi Isa. In Arabic, his name is Nabi Isa. Right, that's correct. So it doesn't mean we disrespect them, say, no, your celebration is wrong. No, we actually should congratulate them on the birth of Prophet Jesus, Isa, alayhi salam. So what did we talk about? We talked about uh, our three Eids mm -hmm. and um, we should con congratulate uh, Christians that mm -hmm. are for the birth of Jesus. Yes, alayhi salam. Alayhi salam. Correct. So thank you for watching. Thank you for sending in your question. If you have any other questions, do send them in. And once again, thank you for watching and ma'a salam. Oh, welcome back, guys. Mm. Wasn't that such a lovely episode? You know, those two sheikhs, I'd yeah. love to, you know, 
meet them one day. Oh, inshallah. I could, I could learn a lot from them in the same way I learn a lot from you, Muhammad Ali. Shall I tell you a secret, Penny? What? I've met them. <gasps> yeah. Wow! What yeah. are they like? They're so kind and, Aww. you know, they're so lovely in person. Oh, alhamdulillah. Yeah. You know, Muhammad Ali, uh -huh. you know we're celebrating Eid tomorrow. Yeah. Are there any special ways you're supposed to get ready for Eid al-Fitr? Yes, of course there are. Oh. There, there are loads of many special ways and there are oh. many recommended acts. So if we if we look at the life of Rasulullah, the Prophet, yeah. then there are certain things that he does during Eid yeah. that we're also supposed to do. Right, okay, yeah. like? Like, for example, waking up early in the morning for Eid. Oh, I see. Yeah. Wake up nice and early. Oh. Because it's a very, very exciting day. Alhamdulillah, uh -huh. it is. And then it's just like, you know those Christmas movies? Yeah. And I, I used to watch them when I was a kid. Yeah. And every time it was Christmas, even if I wasn't celebrating it, in my head, I'll be so excited. Yeah, and I'll wake I, up really, really early. I know what you mean. I yeah. get excited about Eid. But Eid is even special. E because, even more special. Yeah. yeah. And when you do wake up, yeah. it's, it's time for Fajr, right? Oh, so yes! We can pray Salat al-Fajr. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. Oh. And then, yeah. after Salat al-Fajr, yeah. we're supposed to take a special shower. Oh, yeah. Because it's very important to be clean. Yes, yes. And this shower or bath is called the ghusl. Ghusl. Do you know what a ghusl is? It's a special type of bath uh -huh. that makes you clean and in, in a special way so that then you can pray, yeah. read, touch the Qur'an yes. uh, and go to the mosque. Yeah. yeah. And you know, sometimes it's nice to do ghusl just because for the pleasure of Allah because it doesn't just clean you physically, yeah. but it also it has some sort of spiritual benefit. Alhamdulillah. Do you, do you know how to do it? So first, oh. first it's the head, head and your neck yeah. and then it's the... Right, right side. side of your body. And then it's the? Left side of your body. Yeah. Yes. Well done, Penny. Well done. Thank you. And you know, after you had your lovely shower yeah. and you smell really, really nice. Yeah. Also, it's must have to put perfume on. Oh, cool. You can then wear your nice clothes. Oh, you know, talking of nice clothes. Yeah. My mummy's got me a new dress. Ah. But it's a surprise. She's going to show it to me tomorrow. Oh, exciting. Yeah. Exciting. I can't wait. But you know. There is something I have to say. Yeah. Well, it's not my words. It's the words of Imam Ali Oh yeah, what's that? He said that Eid is not when you wear new clothes. Yeah. It's when you fear Allah. <gasps> Subhanallah. Yeah. Because because sometimes we get so we get so confused. Yeah. Like like for example, Eid becomes all about celebrating and wearing the nicest, most expensive clothes. Oh, I get it. But that's not what we're celebrating. We just. Know. We've just been fasting for the past 30 days just so that we could become better Muslims. Exactly. So we shouldn't be materialistic during no, Eid. No, no. Because like we were saying, yeah. you know, I mean, you don't want to become a show-off because of your nice new clothes. Yeah, exactly. Muhammad Ali, what, yeah. do you, what are you going to wear tomorrow? Well, let me tell you what my routine is for Eid. Yeah. Normally, I wake up really early in the morning because yeah. I'm super excited. Yay! And then, and then, actually, before I pray Salat al-Fajr, mm. I tend to go for a shower beforehand. And yeah. that's where I do my ghusl. And then I put on really, really nice clothes. Oh. They're not new. Oh. I, I put on a thobe, a white, clean thobe, which I make sure is washed way in advance. Oh yeah. And and it's it's called different things in different languages. So yeah. some people call it a jubba, kanzu, oh. dishtasha. But it's basically like a big white dress. Oh and they're I see. Thobes. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. But is it nice and new? It's not new actually. No, oh. I wear the same one every year. But oh. it's for special occasions. Like I wear it on Eid al-Fitr. Yeah. Eid al-Adha yeah. and sometimes on other people's birthdays like oh, maybe the Prophet's birthday. That's nice. Yeah. So it just goes to show yeah. you don't ha they don't have to be new clothes no. but they can be nice and clean. Exactly. Alhamdulillah. Because it's something very special. I'm making oh, an effort yeah. and I've also made an effort to make sure it's very clean and ironed. Oh, that's good. I think good. that's important. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. And then, and then yeah. I come downstairs and I, my mum looks at me and she's like, oh, she loves seeing my thobe. Oh. And then she's prepared a super special breakfast for wow. me. Wow. 
Oh. And I love eating breakfast. You know what? Yeah. In fact, well, it's actually recommended to have breakfast oh. before we go for Salah to Eid. Oh, I see. And, yeah. And, you know, tomorrow, yeah. my mum's going to let me have, like, um, my one of my favourite... Um, one of my most favourite things, and that's like chocolate milkshake. Oh my god, yeah. so yummy! I love it because you know yeah. it's tasty and it's sweet, oh. and I might put some cream on top of as well. Mm. What are you gonna have, Muhammad Ali? Do you know what? My, I don't know what my mom's gonna make me, right. but I know in the evening I'm gonna make my speciality. What's that? I'm really good at making pancakes. <gasps> Yeah. I love pancakes. Can I can I come over? Do you know what? We could you we could have like pancakes and a glass of milk in Ooh. the evening just before bed and oh my god it will be so yummy. You know? Yeah. I love milk. Ah. But how does it end up in those bottles and in our homes? Well, that's a very good question, Penny. You know, maybe we should uh, we should ask Ibn Al Haytham. <gasps> He'll oh. probably know a lot more about milk than oh, us. Oh yeah, him and his magical telescope. Uh, yeah. Let's join him. On I look, I see. Yay! Oh, my. Assalamu alaikum and welcome my explorer friends. I'm Ibn Haytham and this is my marvellous telescope. It's special because it goes back in time and can visit any place you can think of. I sit here night after night admiring Allah's wonderful creation. Oh, I can hear some bells. Come, let's take a look and see. Subhanallah! It's the amazing cows going for their evening milking. Hmm. I don't know about you, but I certainly love milk. I have a glass of milk with my breakfast every morning. And what's more, it's very good for you too. Look at these cows. Aren't they huge? But how do we get the milk from the cow's tummy into our bellies? Cows have a very special tummy. Milk cows have a very large stomach with four separate spaces. That's why cows are great at making milk. Grass and hay can be eaten by the dairy cow to make two highly nutritious products, milk and meat. It only takes a cow about two days to turn her food into milk, you see. <laughs> this family of dairy cows eat from the tasty grass. After chewing cud or yummy grass, a cow will swallow again and the cud goes into the third and fourth stomach area. Here the food goes around and around in their tummies and the good parts of the food goes into their blood, which will then help to make the milk. Oh look, here is a man milking a cow with his hands. I bet it took a long time to make the milk come out. <laughs> but nowadays they have a much faster way to milk cows and it involves using a machine. <laughs> Look at these cows. They have their big bottoms facing the dairy farmer who's going to put a special machine on their udders. The udders look like sausages and that's where all the milk comes out from. These special machines pump the udders just like a hand would do, but they make the job faster, 
much faster. Farmers milk their cows twice a day by machine. Oftentimes, the farmer rises early in the morning to do the first milking. The cows' udders look like sausages, don't they? <laughs> Dairy farmers feed and care for their cows. It is important to keep the cows healthy and happy so they may live long and productive lives. Wow, look at this huge truck. You know how the fridge in your home keeps all your food nice and cold? Well, this truck does the same with the milk. They're on their way to the processing plant. That's where they test the milk to make sure it's healthy for people to drink. From the milk processing plant, Milk and other dairy products are moved to grocery stores where you can then buy them. Hmm, these dairy products look tasty. I love cheese and yogurts. I like the way they package the milk. It looks so neat and tidy. But remember, keep your dairy foods cold in your refrigerator at home. Now that you know where dairy products come from, you can enjoy them even more. Remember to eat at least three servings of dairy foods every day. Hey, what's that mushy white stuff? It looks like fluffy candy floss. <laughs> oh, I see now. It's the stuff to make the cheese. I'd like to get my hands tucked into that soft white stuff. I bet it's nice to play with too. <laughs> And then finally it becomes hard and round. And now it can be sold in the shops so that people like you and me can buy some. Do you like spreading cheese on your toast in the morning? I certainly do. And then I might put some jam on it too, make it taste even better. Subhanallah, cows are truly cool. And without them, we wouldn't have any milk because people can't make it, but thankfully cows can. Allah created the gorgeous world and everything in it. It's been said that it's impossible to see the whole world in our lifetime, but it doesn't mean we shouldn't try. <laughs> I'm going to search for more and more of Allah's wonderful creations in this universe. So until next time, my explorer friends, Assalamu alaikum. Warahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Oh, welcome back. Oh, Ibn al Haytham, you're so clever. You and your magical telescope. Thank you for letting us all know about one of the tastiest drinks in the whole world, mm. milk. Mm. <laughs> uh, it's, it's so yummy milk, isn't I it? I know, it's I, kind of making me hungry imagine, right about now. Imagine the journey the milk has travelled to just to get to my tummy. I know, I completely understand. Yeah. I mean, what an amazing creature the cow is. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Because we can't make milk. No, that's true. But you know what we can do? Yeah. We can go to Eid Salah. Oh, yeah. That's <laughs> going to be tomorrow morning. I just can't wait. I can't stop thinking about it. I'm so excited. Yeah, me too. Do you know, too. my favourite part is, yeah. so, so after the Eid Salah, yeah. we get to shake everyone's hand. Aww. And people are so lovely and kind. And you Aww. see these massive smiles on their faces. Oh, it just yeah. makes me so happy. I know, because everybody's happy to be together and to share gifts yeah. and to share food. Exactly. Aww. You know, you know, when I was younger, yeah. do you know what my teachers used to tell me? What's that? That we have to shake hands of 40 people. Oh. And I thought it was like a religious thing where you have to shake exactly 40. So we used to count to 40. Yeah. And then whoever made it to 41st wins. Oh. We used to have a competition, my friends. Oh. But then when I grew up, I realized it's just a way to encourage you because well, you should shake hands with as many people, people as possible. Yeah, exactly. So you might shake... 50 people. Yeah, hands. yeah, there's oh. nothing stopping me to no, do that. No, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, uh, you know, uh -huh. Muhammad Ali. Yeah. I was just wondering. Yeah. Because 
I don't know when I'm going to see you again uh -huh. because, you know, I might be going on a short trip. Oh, really? Yeah, I oh, might exciting. be going abroad again. Oh, wow. Yeah, Inshallah. with my family. Make well, sure you take loads of pictures. Yeah, I will. I will. Um, would it yeah. be okay if you read me a story? Actually, yeah. I was just about to ask oh. you because I've actually prepared a story. Alhamdulillah. Yeah, go for it. I love stories. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. Are you all ears, Penny? I am all ears. Perfect. It was the day of celebration and a day of rejoicing. Aww. There was an air of festivity in the streets of Medina. Mm. And who lived in Medina? Rasulullah! Exactly! All the people, both young and old, were dressed in the best clothes. Aww. Especially for this special day of Eid. Alhamdulillah! As it was time for early morning Eid prayers, yeah. everyone made their way to an open piece of land on the outskirts of the city. Oh, subhanAllah. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, yeah. arrived and led the prayers. Oh. After they had finished, they all greeted each other and oh. everyone was walking back home. Uh -huh. The children running and playing in excitement, excitement, smiling and laughing without a care in the world. Oh. As the Prophet, peace be upon him, walked back home, he suddenly became mm. aware of a little boy, Suhair. Mm. He was sitting by himself on the side of the path. Oh. The little boy was crying oh, and looked dear. very sad. Oh dear. The Prophet, peace be upon him, bent down and patted him on the shoulders and asked, Why are you crying, my dear? Oh. Please, leave me alone, sobbed the little boy. The boy didn't even see who was talking to him. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, ran his fingers through the boy's hair. That's so sweet. Mm -hmm, and very gently asked him again why he was crying. Aww. This time, the boy said, My father went back to Allah when he was fighting. And now my mother has married again. Aww. And my stepfather does not want me to live at home anymore. That's not nice. Today is Eid and everyone is happy. All the children have new clothes and nice things to eat. Oh. But I don't have any clothes except what I am wearing. Oh no. I have no food and I don't even have a place to <gasps> live. That's Muhammad Ali, that's awful. Poor poor little boys are here. I feel so sorry for so him. So do I. Oh, let's see what happens. Let's see how the Prophet reacts. Okay, yeah, what does he say? So the Prophet, peace be upon him, said to him, I know how you feel. I lost both my mother and father when I was a little boy. He did. Yeah. The boy was surprised to hear that it was an orphan who was comforting him. Yeah. And when he looked up, to his great surprise, it was Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And he immediately jumped up to his Aww. feet out of love and respect. Oh, subhanAllah. Who, who better to comfort you and make you feel better than our beloved Rasulullah? Yeah, exactly. So the Prophet, peace be upon him, said to him, If I were to become your new father yeah. and Fatima, your new sister, Aww. would that make you feel better? Aww. Oh, yes. That would be the best thing in the whole world. Aww. The boy started smiling. Aww. The Prophet took him home and gave him new clothes and good food on this beautiful day of Eid. The boy indeed had a wonderful Eid that day. And what better family could you ask for than the family, the Ahlul Bayt? Yeah, exactly. SubhanAllah. So it's true. Allah doesn't take something away uh -huh. without giving you something much better later on. Oh. oh. You know, Allah always has a plan for us. He does. Uh -huh. and, and even even now, you know that that you know you know from Eid is going to be tomorrow. Yeah. And, you know we're going to have so much fun and uh -huh. everything. We we have to remember that there are people out there who don't have parents or, yeah. or anyone to keep them company. Uh -huh. But you know what? Uh -huh. We have Allah. We have the Quran, uh -huh. and we have the Ahlul Bayt. Oh, so true, subhanAllah. And you know, someone was telling me hmm. that because we're like a channel of mercy of Allah, which means like, because we're servants of Allah, yeah. and we're supposed to do Allah's job. Oh. Not, not because He can't do it, but because He's created us for a purpose, oh, to be yes. good, right? 
Yes. So, so for example, my, my teacher was telling me yeah. that for if you see someone who's celebrating Eid by themselves, then yeah. you should invite them to your house. Exactly. Yeah, because we can't rely on other people to do good because we're supposed to do good. Absolutely right. Yeah. Oh, Muhammad Ali, I just wanted to say yeah. a really big thank you. Aww. To especially to you because Aww. you're like the big brother that I don't have. Oh, thank you, Penny. That's so yeah. sweet of you. And I've learned a lot from you. You're really clever. Well, you know, I appreciate your company too. And Aww. I learned so much from you. Aww. And I hope you guys learn from us too. Absolutely. And you know what? Uh-huh. I'll probably see you at the mosque tomorrow. Inshallah. But before we go, yeah. I've got a special little quote for oh, our yeah. calendar. Oh, cool. Oh, let's open up. Oh, OK. So today's quote yeah. says, every day that you do not sin is Eid. <gasps> oh, my God. So it could be Eid every day. If, yeah, if we are very careful and uh -huh. listen to Allah. Imam Ali Islam said that if we don't sin, it's Eid. Wow, like a celebration. Yeah. SubhanAllah. Do you know what that means, Penny? What's that? That if we don't sin, then we can celebrate every single day. Alhamdulillah. Aww. But for you guys at home, yeah. I think we should wish them a last Ramadan Mubarak. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, three, two, two one. one. Eid, Eid Mubarak. Mubarak. Aww. Ma'asalam, guys. Ma'asalam, Papa.